Today we decided to retell for you a manga called Pigpen. Be sure to write comments and tell us how you like the plot of this manga and whether you are waiting for the continuation. Put likes, subscribe and we will start. The main character found himself on the shore of an island, not remembering who he was and why he was in this place. He was standing in the middle of the water on the shore, and he was surrounded by some debris. It seems that there was a shipwreck. He looked in the opposite direction and couldn't see land at all. The ocean surrounded him to the horizon, and he still didn't know exactly where he was. At that moment, one of the wreckage or parts of the ship touched his leg. He looked down and picked up this strange object, which looked like a smaller house. It turned out to be a mailbox. He went up to the beach and stuck this mailbox right in the sand, after which he decided to take a walk with the hope of finding something else on this island, after which he went on his little trip. He walked all day and as soon as the sun sank below the horizon, he came back to the place where he had stuck the mailbox at the very beginning of his journey. It only meant that the place where he was was an island. At that moment, he looked around again and looked towards the jungle that he hadn't explored for today. The vegetation didn't look friendly, no light could be seen through it, and it was pitch dark. There was nothing to do but explore the jungle as well, so he walked through the vegetation, the grass so high that it came up to his waist. He went deeper and deeper, and it even seemed to him that this island was uninhabited, but at that moment lightning flashed in the sky and lit up the entire area, and a few seconds later it began to rain. The main character huddled under some hanging stone and continued to think about where he was, and why everything was so out of place today, like the rain that had begun. At that moment, he remembered that he had a phone in the inside pocket of his jacket, which of course was soaked during the time he was in the water, so now it did not turn on at all and did not show signs of life. The main character threw his phone on the ground, it clattered loudly twice, and then he decided to try to dry it so that maybe he had a second chance to turn on the phone. At this moment, he looked around again, the rain subsided a little and the main character noticed that not far from him is a large two-story house right in the center of the island. It was hidden from view behind a huge jungle and tall grass. At this time, we are informed that the number of tourists missing on the west coast has been increasing recently, and the search for missing Alan H. College students continues. He has a dream where the owner of the cafe watches the news that was announced earlier. He turns to the main character with a question about what he thinks about this. He replies that he thinks exactly the same, then puts money on the table and is going to leave. The man asks him to stop so that he can give him his change. But the main character asks not to return this change, the man thinks that his face looks incredibly familiar, after which he approached him so close and looked under his cap, which made him look like a demon or already long dead. He asked in a low and cold voice, it's you, isn't it? The main character at this moment abruptly jumped out of bed screaming in horror and did not understand where he was at all. He looked around and realized that he was in some room, so he decided to leave it to look around. At the end of the hallway, he spots a woman cleaning something up with a mop, wiping away some huge and blood-red stain. He turned to her with a question to clarify exactly where he was, to which she replied that they were at her home. The woman reported that they found him lying unconscious near her house, most likely he was in some kind of accident or something. He was found by her young daughter and brought inside their house, they put him in one of the guest rooms so that he could sleep off and recover. The main character thanked them for their kindness, and also that they gave him a helping hand which he needed so much. The woman asked him where he came from, but he said that he was on a ship that was wrecked, and he did not remember more. The woman chuckled a little as she said that no one had booked rooms for today, which was why she wondered where he was from. The woman said that the place where it is located is a bed and breakfast hotel, which is not so much for the island, but, the main character interrupted her to clarify where they were, but the woman pretended that she did not understand at all what was being said, and again repeated that they were at her house. The main character nervously swallowed his saliva and decided to rephrase the question to clarify the exact location of the island, looking at the feet of this woman, who really seemed to be wiping puddles of blood. The woman replied that first he needed to get dressed, the main character looked at himself, blushed and asked for forgiveness that he was in front of her in this form. She asked him to go to her room, where she would bring his clothes, which were soaked in the rain when he was picked up near the house, to which the main character thanked her. He went back to his room and didn't understand what this desert island in was, why she interrupted him and didn't tell him exactly where this island was. There were several knocks on his door and he told them to come in, and then the door opened and he saw a young girl in heels and strange tights with square cutouts, she had big and dark eyes and a choker around her neck, and she was holding out his clothes to him. She noticed that his gaze seemed a little strange to her, and he looked her up and down several times, paying special attention to her breasts and legs. 
The main character began to apologize for this, to which the girl replied that she was joking, he just looked at her so strangely, after which she decided to ask what exactly his name was, but he replied that he did not remember at all, most likely, his memory was beaten off after a shipwreck. The girl looked at him admiringly and asked him again if he really had amnesia and if he was joking that he really didn't remember his name. She went on to say it was like something out of a movie or something, and she thought it was really cool because she'd never met anyone with amnesia before. She was laughing and stopped abruptly, saying the word, okay. The main character asked again, so how did he end up here and reminded that he did not remember his name and did not know anything. He said that he knew that they were on an island, but he was interested in the exact location of this island. The girl asked him if he was interested in the question of where he is now, to which the guy said yes several times he was most interested in right now. The girl smiled maliciously and was silent for a short time, after which she replied that he was currently at their house, and at that moment her whole family was standing in the corridor, they were looking at them at that moment, which looked very sinister. They went down to the first floor as a family and sat down to eat breakfast together. The father of the family sat at the head of the table, behind him was a large fireplace and the head of an elk hung on this fireplace. The father of the family said that their table is not full of food, but he can help himself and try everything that he sees on this table. The main character was surprised that there was actually enough food on the table, so he thanked the head of the family for the treats. The father of the family again decided to ask if the wounds that the main character received during the shipwreck had healed. He replied that everything was already fine and decided to try the steak in front of him. As it turned out, the taste was incredibly delicious, which he told the hostess. She leaned over him and looked with her own eyes as if into the soul, and he repeated that the steak was very tasty and she cooks just amazing. The main character felt so uncomfortable that drops of sweat even rolled down his body from awkwardness. The woman kept looking at him and smiling, but she didn't say a word, which only made the whole situation worse. The main character thought that she might want even more compliments, so he began to praise her meat, paying attention to all the points. In the end, they are interrupted by the head of the family, confirming that his wife was very good at cooking, so he was very lucky with her. The main character again wanted to ask where exactly he was, but the head of the family interrupted him and asked his eldest daughter to pour tea for the guest. She held out a mug of tea but something about it scared him away, and he looked into the mug filled with red tea and saw his reflection in it, and then remembered the red marks that the owner of this house had rubbed down when he left his room. It was as if he remembered something, but he couldn't quite figure out what it was that he remembered. The eldest daughter's name was Romy, she turned to the main character, who was thinking about something with a question about dogwood cherry tea, she asked him if he liked the taste of this tea. She continued her thought, as the main character still didn't respond. She whispered that he was bright red in color, just like human blood. At this moment, her little sister started laughing out loud and called her sister a whore after she silenced her. At this point, the head of the family intervened and told the table to be quiet. He asked his younger sister Yumi to apologize for saying something about a whore, and he also made his older daughter Romy apologize to the younger one. As soon as it was 2 o'clock, the eldest son named Minwoo got up from the table, and then went somewhere, which greatly confused the main character. They told him that he had a job of his own and that they were raising pigs, which was why they had this meat on the table. The owner of the house reported that Yumi, a little girl personally stabbed them to death. At this moment, he felt uneasy, answered clearly and continued to chew on the meat, he didn't understand how a little girl like Yumi could deal with pigs. After everyone had eaten, the main character went to wash the dishes, the hostess did not understand why he was doing this, but it seemed to him that since he was penniless and had to count on their hospitality, he should do everything in his power. After that, the hostess thanked him for his work, and she went to rest, then he asked her to relax today, and he began to continue washing dishes after eating. He glanced at the knives while he was washing the dishes, and didn't understand why he was so focused on it, he felt uneasy. After he washed the dishes, the main character returned to his room, where he sat on the bed and could not understand what kind of strange people surrounded him, he believed that the whole family seemed to him some kind of creepy and evil. He kept going over all the conversations he'd had today, and he couldn't understand why none of them had answered his question about where this island was. And they were apparently so brazen that they didn't even try to hide it. He thought again of the news bulletin that had mentioned an increase in missing tourists from his past or dream, but he tried to take his mind off it. He crawled across the bed to his pillow and lifted it, revealing the kitchen knife he'd picked up while washing the dishes. He felt that he should keep it handy so that he could get some sleep. At this point, the door was knocked several times and asked if it was okay to enter, 
so he had to drop the pillow and sit down as naturally as possible before the room was entered. On the threshold of the room, the hostess of the house appeared, the main character noticed that it was already late and whether it was not so, and a shiver and cold ran through his body. She came even closer to him and put her hands directly on his shoulders, which made him look incredibly panicked, her eyes were so huge that they didn't look human, she asked him if he had stolen the kitchen knife. This silence lasted for a few seconds, the main character broke out in a sweat and cold from this look, and he decided to repeat the question that she needed a kitchen knife to get rid of this awkward silence. The hostess abruptly pulled away from him, and began to apologize several times, because how could she think that he had stolen a kitchen knife? The main character pretended that he did not understand everything that was happening and asked again, are you looking for a missing kitchen knife? To which the hostess replied in the affirmative and began to leave. She thought that her youngest daughter, Yumi, might have done it, but she always tells her not to. The main character continued to sit on the bed, and beads of sweat began to roll down his face. The landlady apologized several times for disturbing him so late at night and hoping she hadn't interrupted him. The hostess bade him good night, and then suggested that he pay off only when his memory returned, smiled and left the room. As soon as the door closed, he turned his attention to the fact that the doors were keyless, which made him feel even more like this house was full of oddities. He knew that it was unlikely that he would be able to sleep in this place, so he went to the window and began to look at everything that was happening on the street. He wanted to remember who he was and how he got here. He remembered that until the moment he came to this house, he had a phone that he threw around in the rain because it didn't work and wouldn't even turn on. At this moment, there was movement on the street, the owner's son named Minwoo was walking in front, and behind him was a guy he hadn't seen before. The main character went to his pillow, took a kitchen knife and decided to leave his room. He wasn't at the dinner, and his appearance is far from perfect, so it felt like something unclean was going on here. He walked around the house in the dark and went down the stairs, right before leaving, he heard the conversation between the owner and the youngest daughter, who proved that she did not take a kitchen knife. He heard that tomorrow, while cleaning, she would be looking for him in the room where he was staying, because maybe he was hiding this knife under his pillow. Minwoo at that moment was saying goodbye to a strange guy who looked very tired, he told him that they would see each other again in the morning, but his face was so scary that it looked more like some kind of nightmare. As soon as the owner's son left, the protagonist appeared from behind the tree, who called out to this guy, which made him scared, but the protagonist put his finger to his lips, indicating that he should be quiet. As soon as they went inside the old house, a strange guy introduced himself, his name was Chin Taihi. The main character calmed down a bit and decided to find out if he lives here, but Chin Taihi asked him if he would recognize him? The protagonist was perplexed by this question, he did not understand exactly where they had met before, he admitted that after he had an accident, his memory was lost. He decided to check with Taiyi exactly where they were, but the guy rudely replied that he would never ask this question, especially those crazy people who live in the house. He decided to remind him that last night in the rain he saw him when the main character approached the house and was glad that there were people in it. At that moment, someone in a raincoat stood behind him and hit him on the head with a shovel, from which he lost consciousness and was carried into the house. Taiyi then told him to let them make sure that you were useful but the main character did not understand why he should do this, to which the guy replied because he should. At this time, in the house, the hostess walked with a lamp along the floor near all the rooms, making the floor creak with each step she took. She went to his door and bent down to look through the hole where the lock should have been, and saw that he was lying in his bed. A sinister smile appeared on her face, wondering how he could fall asleep under such circumstances. But the main character at that moment was far from sleeping and heard her every word. He did not understand how much longer this night would last, because he could not sleep. According to his internal sensations, more than five hours had passed, but the moon continued to shine in the window, so his guesses about the time were incorrect. That night, some strange and thin boy was sitting on a swing next to a tree house, which was located on the same island. He jerked his legs, swinging on a swing, and in his hands was a phone that belonged to the main character, after which he pressed the power button and it activated illuminating the entire location with a flash. The next morning at breakfast the table was covered with food, the head of the family asked him how he slept last night, because he looked very tired. Romy suggested that he might be the type of person who can't sleep in an unfamiliar environment, but he said they had nothing to worry about. The head of the family again asked if his memory had returned to him, to which he replied that it definitely had not returned to the end. Romy added that everything sounded very serious, 
but advised him not to worry and not to worry, because sooner or later his memory should return. He was sitting at the table and noticed that all the dishes are completely different, so he decided to ask if she cooks all these dishes herself. No one gave him an answer to this question, everyone just silently looked at him, as if hiding their anger and hatred for him, so the head of the family decided to pray before starting the meal. But while they had not yet begun, the hostess interrupted him and asked him to say something that they had discussed earlier, he remembered their dialogue and decided to start with him. He put his shoes on the table and stated that last night someone went outside in them, which made the protagonist have a drop of sweat on his forehead. The eldest daughter suggested that maybe it was her older brother Minu, because who else could go out in the middle of the night wearing her father's shoes? Yumi at that moment jumped up from her seat and screamed that her brother was too dumb because he put on his father's favorite shoes, so now he is dead. He turned to his son, reminding him that lying is a sin, so Minu shook his head that it was not him. His father again asked him about the shoes and hovered over him, because he was sure that it was his son, who seemed to lying to him. The protagonist could not stand it and jumped up, yelling wait, he stood in front of the table and said that he put on his shoes last night. Everyone did not expect that it was him, therefore, from such an act, they even sharply turned their heads in his direction and continued to look in surprise in his direction. He admitted that he was bored last night and couldn't find his phone, so he decided to go outside for a while. He thought it was just a pair of old shoes, but the head of the family was hooked by the phrase that he was bored. He decided to cheer him up so that he would not find this place boring. After breakfast was over, they, along with the head of the family, ended up on a cliff, from where they fired a gun at flying gulls. Usually, when they hear shots, they sense danger, and immediately scatter in different directions. However, you can always find a few that do not have time to react or are simply inattentive, after which the father of the family fired at them again and the bodies of the birds fell into the water. He handed the gun to the protagonist and asked him why he should not try hunting. He took the gun and confessed that he had never fired a gun before, so the head of the family asked him if he was afraid of it. The protagonist replied that he was not afraid of this, he simply did not understand why, because this was not hunting for food, they were just going to kill them for fun, referring to the man standing in front of him. The head of the family asked him if he didn't tell them that he was bored, but the main character did not understand what to answer at that moment, so a short silence hung in the air, where everyone looked at each other. The head of the family turned his back on him, indicating with his hand what kind of bird he could shoot from flying above them. He asked him if he could handle it and at that moment he realized that the main character was aiming at him. The main character was almost on edge, and he did not understand why no one was saying anything to him in this place, pointing a gun at the head of the family. Then he decided to clarify what exactly he wants to hear. Then the main character shouted the question, where are they, as well as this guy who looks like a slave, who is he and why is he here? He still did not understand what they were doing on this godforsaken island, and the head of the family at that moment came a little closer to the barrel of the gun, which was still aimed at him. He grabbed him by the trunk and replied that this island has no name, and that guy is not a slave, but their precious employee, and they just run a small hotel, and he is their guest. He began to pay him the prices for all the services that were provided, and at the moment he did not pay a single yen, but still dared to threaten the owner with a weapon. The head of the family grabbed the gun from his hands and pointed it towards the main character, after a few moments he pulled the trigger and nothing happened, and the main character was already crouching on the ground and screaming in fear. The man just laughed, because it was a two-shot gun, which must be reloaded after two shots, and since he is penniless, he cannot give him a full lesson. The main character did not even know what to say to him at that moment, he was so scared of what had happened that he just looked and listened to everything that the owner of the hotel, who was standing in front of him, was doing then. The owner asked him if he knew that the gun was not loaded, right? If not, then it was a pretty dangerous joke, wasn't it? And his eyes increased several times, they were dark in color and looked like a real abyss, so the main character screamed that everything was so. In the evening of the same day, he sat on the shore and did not understand what kind of family it was, why there was a hotel on an abandoned island, why they were doing all this with him, and why he did not remember anything, and most importantly, how he got to this island. He drew attention to the mailbox, which had been standing a couple of seconds ago, suddenly fell sharply, which confused him very much, and he decided to approach him, because why did he fall if there was no wind at all? He drew attention to the stake on which the mailbox stood, because he remembered exactly that it was not sharp, and now he held it in his hand and the piece of wood at the end of the box was incredibly sharp, like a murder weapon. He threw the mailbox and it fell, 
and then drew attention to the window inside the box and decided to open it. There was some piece of paper inside, which he easily took out of it. It was small in size, and all in pixels, which made it impossible to see the image on it, and the number 5 was drawn on the back of the paper. The main character looked at this piece of paper, first at the image, then at the number and did not understand anything, especially what the number 5 was on the back of the sheet. At this time, a girl named Romy approached our main character, because of which he had to crumple the sheet and put it in his pocket. She asked him how his date with his father went. He was a little confused by such a question, but after a short period of time he replied that he was a completely unique person, which his eldest daughter, standing in front of him, agreed with. The girl invited him to take a walk along the shore of this beach, and he followed her, at this time the sun was setting over the horizon, because of which the clouds were painted in a soft pink color, like the sky. They followed each other, and then the main character turned to Romy, that her father told him that this island has no name, with which Romy agreed, because it was really so. He was interested in the belonging of this island on a political basis, so he asked if this nameless island belongs to Korea, to which the girl did not give an affirmative answer, saying that it was possible. He was even more interested in this, because it seemed that they illegally privatized the whole island for themselves, to which the girl replied if there would be any other topics for conversation besides the island. She turned sharply and threw herself into his arms, she approached him incredibly close and asked if there was nothing here that had already attracted his attention, something that would be more interesting. He did not know what exactly to answer this question to her, so he asked her a question, how old is she to talk to him like that? The girl replied that it didn't matter at all, because they were both already adults, wasn't that enough for him, from which the main character was incredibly taken aback. She touched her hand to his earlobe and slowly ran her hand from ear to neck, gently touching his skin, which made him goosebumps. She stroked his face and neck with her hand, touching his collarbones and slowly running her nails over them, and then she spoke to do something very pleasant. She walked away from him a couple of steps, and he continued to stand still, after which Romy asked him to follow her, and he went as if spellbound. They arrived at a new location, where Romy revealed that it was their rock fishing equipment, and it usually costs 30,000 won, but this time it's all on the house. The main character was embarrassed and surprised that the girl was talking about fishing when she stood next to him and touched him, and not about what he thought in his head. After a couple of seconds of silence, the girl laughed out loud, starting to ask questions, what else did he expect and what was he thinking, calling him funny, from which he did not even know what to say. The main character shouted that he did not expect anything like this, but then Romy asked him why he was so angry if he did not invent anything in his head. Romy asked him, as she put the worm on the hook of the spinning rod, if he thought his memory might come back if he did everyday things like what they were doing now. From the picture he saw, how she strings a worm on a hook, he almost vomited, but when he overcame the feeling of nausea, he replied that maybe everything would be so. The protagonist, sitting next to Romy, noticed that these worms look disgusting, but she handles them well. Romy turned to face him and said that he was the kind of person who gets scared very easily, laughing a little and smiling as she said this. The waves beat loudly against the rocks, muffling the cries of the seagulls, and the main character, after a short silence, replied that he did not remember who he was, and he was also now on a strange island full of strange people, so, yes, he is now a little uncomfortable. Romy sighed languidly and apologized, because she was now sure that he got a bad first impression of them, and she knows that for him they now seem like some kind of eccentric people. Her father is a very strict man because of his religious beliefs, and since he hates the city, he brought them all here to this island in a rather cruel way. Her mother knows nothing about how this world works, and she is completely mired in illusions due to Prince's syndrome. Her brother Minu just went deep into himself. And her sister, she has absolutely no idea what he will be when he grows up. The protagonist replied that she was quite critical of her own family. He asked her to tell about this girl Yumi, who caught and killed bugs today because it makes her happy, so doesn't she think she's crazy? Romy replied that children her age can't always tell what's good and what's bad, so they easily squash bugs or do something similar. She turned to him with a question, maybe he remembers himself in childhood and maybe he was like that too, but the protagonist replied that he didn't remember anything at all, and Romy replied that it was certainly bad. Romy again confessed that she had never met people with amnesia, so she was a little curious and wanted to know if she could help by talking to him about her past. Then she asked for forgiveness again because she knew that this was a serious problem for him, about which he now worries a lot and all that. At this moment, the spinning float begins to peck, 
Romy shouted to him to pull the bait faster, but the main character does not work at all, so she decides to do everything herself. At the moment when she tried to quickly grab the fishing rod, the cover came out from under her feet and her legs slipped, so she flew with her whole body right at the main character, and he hugged her and pressed her tighter to himself so that Romy would not hit. He asked her if she was alright and if she had hit herself when she fell. He also said that she needed to be more careful, but at that moment she got up and sat next to him. She was silent, then looked around, it was clear that she wanted to say something, but she was afraid that she might be heard, so she approached him as close as possible, put her hands on her shoulders and laid him on his back. Then she hung right over his face, and her ends of hair touched the face of the protagonist and slowly and quietly with tears in her eyes said, please save me, which made the protagonist very scared. The girl at that moment approached him even closer, after which she admitted that she really wants to leave this island. After that, she abruptly got up and ran away from him, and the main character stood and thought about her words, because she wants to leave this island, but she can't. At that moment, he noticed that there was a book not far from him, which he decided to pick up and see what was written inside, but all the pages were crystal clear and there was not a single word on them. He returned to the house, where already on the way to him he met his older brother Mina, walking with a sickle and a bag of something. His appearance was, as always, not friendly. The protagonist turned to him, saying that in the morning he caused them a lot of trouble, so he asks for forgiveness in front of him. Minu did not answer anything, did not even look at the main character who was addressing him, and continued to walk on as if nothing had happened. The protagonist wanted to ask him if he was being held here by force, but simply asking if he was being held here by force would somehow be wrong. At this moment, the main character remembered that he was told by a strange guy who lives here and helps with the housework, that he needs to prove his usefulness to them. The main character stood and thought how to prove all his usefulness, and also recalled fragments of dialogues recently with members of this family. But at that moment Minu approached him so close that his head was almost lying on the shoulder of the main character, and he the protagonist didn't even realize it. After that, our main character abruptly jumped back with a cry, and asked him what he wanted from him. Minu tells him to give him something to ask, he is very interested to know about it. After which he looks at the book and asks if this book belongs to Romy, the protagonist felt a little relieved when it came to the book, so he replied that he was just carrying it to Romy to return. Minu increased several times, he no longer looked like a man, after which he shouted that he had killed Romy. The protagonist stood in front of him and did not understand what was happening now, so he asked Minu what he meant. Minu again answered in an inhuman voice that the protagonist had killed his sister Romy, but the main character refused, saying that he had no reason to kill Romy, and also asking Mina why he would kill her at all. The protagonist turned his attention to the sickle in the hand of Minu standing in front of him, after which he said that he would finish him off. The protagonist, after such words, began to run from Minu towards the house, shouting that they were going to kill him, and when he ran to the house and began to pull the handle, it turned out that the door was closed. At that time, Minu was calmly walking towards the main character and was about to end his life. The protagonist already at the door panicked, turning to Ming, he said that he had completely gone crazy, because he said that he did not kill Romy, after which he called Mina a crazy bastard. Minu at that moment approached even closer to him, his eyes were incredibly huge and similar to demonic, but not at all human, and the main character at this time continued to scream in fear. Yumi came out from behind the house and said that she had just seen Romy, she ended up in her room holding a fashion show. Minu asked his younger sister if Romy was alive, to which she replied that she was unfortunately alive. At that moment, Minu simply turned away from the main character, turned around and went on about his business. Minu asked him to give the book that he wanted to give to her older sister. He handed the book to Yumi, she leafed through this book, after which she simply threw it next to him, calling her sister a crazy bitch. The protagonist was still sitting in the same place and realized that just now he was almost killed just like that, and then they just left without even apologizing. He stood up and loudly told them to stop at which point both Yumi and Minu stopped. He almost at the limit of his aggression said that Minu apologized for his act, calling him a complete son of a bitch. Minu continued to stare as if nothing had happened. Yumi turned to him asking if he did something bad that he should apologize for, but Minu shook his head. Minu shouted that he didn't do anything, since he was shaking his head, but this did not calm the main character, because he had just almost killed him. Yumi was surprised and asked her brother about it, to which he replied that, he thought he killed Romi. Yumi laughed and said that if he really killed his older sister, then he should have been rewarded, not killed. The main character did not understand what was wrong with this girl, because now is not the time for jokes at all. Yumi addressed the main character, saying that sometimes her older brother thinks slowly, so she simply suggested that he not pay attention to it. Yumi continued to talk to her brother, because even if he said that he would kill him, he really did not want to kill him, right Minu? But to all this speech of her younger sister Yumi, he replied that if he had killed Romi, then he would have finished him. Yumi looked at his brother again and smiled at him and said, but he did not kill her so there is no need to kill the main character right now, 
To which her older brother agreed. Yumi asked the main character if he really wants to kill their sister Romi. The protagonist was taken aback by such a question, but Yumi repeated it again, to which he replied, what is she even talking about, why should he kill Romi, after which Yumi jumped happily and said that, well, that's alright, all the differences have been settled. After that, they turned around and went towards the pigsty, but the main character shouted to them to stop, because he did not understand how they settled all the differences in this way. The protagonist shouted at Ming's back to apologize properly, because he scared him so much that his heart nearly jumped out of his chest. Yumi approached the main character and asked him if he really had heart problems? After all, it seems to her that he does not have such problems. On the other hand, doesn't it seem to him that he is very cruel to a sick person? After all, her brother is not one of those people who can be called normal, so why doesn't he just get into position and stop whining? The protagonist replied that it's not all about whining, but when someone is chasing you with a sickle in their hands. Yumi laughed at the word haunts, because she was standing next to the corner of the house and saw everything. He just held his sickle in his hands, and the main character got scared and ran. You are just a miserable coward, so what is their fault here? The protagonist, already in aggression, cried out how dare she call him a coward, and how dare she talk to him like that, calling him a petty asshole. At that moment, he pushed this girl standing next to him, and she deliberately screamed, and then fell to her knees and sat down with her eyes closed. At that moment, the door of the house opened and the mistress of the house stood on the threshold, not understanding what was happening there, after which she saw her daughter crying and sitting on her knees in front of the entrance to the house, so she asked her what happened here. The girl began to complain and make up things that didn't even happen. She said that he called her brother names because he was disabled, and he also called him an asshole and wanted to hit her. The main character did not understand at all what she was talking about, because there was nothing of this. She turned everything upside down and made him guilty. The hostess turned to him, because she thought that he was not like that. Why did he raise his voice? Because it's so scary. But the main character claimed that she was lying. The hostess continued to talk, because she thought he was a decent person. But he really disappointed her, because her children are very good and he has no right to intimidate them or call them such terrible names. Yumi realized that her mother was on her side, so she repeated her entire speech again, and also added that he spoke badly about Uni too. At this moment, the main character could not stand it and yelled at Yuma so that she would shut up and stop carrying this nonsense. The mistress of the house turned to him, hugging her daughter to her and said that they needed to talk face to face. She invited him into the house, poured tea and seated him on the sofa, sat opposite him and silence reigned in the room. He began to make excuses that all this was an ordinary misunderstanding and so on, but the hostess sharply asked him if he had taken a knife, but in her eyes shone with some note of madness. She repeated the question of whether he had taken the kitchen knife as he approached him, and asked it again a few more times, which only made the whole situation more eerie. He pretended not to understand what exactly she was asking him about and sat with a bewildered face. She returned to the topic of the knife again, and said, wherever she looked for it, she could not find it anywhere. She searched his entire room but still didn't find anything and at that moment she smiled evilly as if she knew he had him. She moved even closer to him, her eyes looked even more like inhuman ones, and the emotion frozen on her face made her shiver and chill her body. At that moment, she said that she was completely sure that he had taken it. The woman decided that she could no longer allow him to spend the night at her house, because she could not trust him enough to leave him at night with them, because all the same, most likely he had stolen a kitchen knife. The protagonist shouted that he did not take this kitchen knife, but at the moment, until the missing knife is found, he will spend the night in a treehouse. He went at night through the whole island in search of this treehouse and after a while he nevertheless came out to him. He climbed the stairs inside, but the smell inside was so eerie that it seemed like this treehouse was abandoned. Well, it's true that he took that kitchen knife, but this woman, how can she be sure that it was he who stole that knife? Now he had no choice but to continue his life here in the treehouse, but in part this is even for the better, because from the window he can watch the approach to the house, so he will know in advance if someone suddenly wants to visit him. And the only way to get up here is to use the ladder hanging in front of the entrance. If he blocks the entrance with boxes, then no one can get inside the house without his knowledge. And tonight he will have a great chance to sleep. He took out a sleeping bag, lay down in it, the moon shone on him, and he tried to concentrate so that he could finally fall asleep and as soon as he closed his eyes, he heard some sounds coming from near the treehouse. Perhaps he fell asleep so quickly that he himself did not realize it. He went to the window to see who exactly made these strange sounds at night and it turned out that the little boy was sitting on a swing next to the house and swinging. The child continued to sit and look somewhere, after which he abruptly raised his head and looked at the main character, in the hands of the boy was the phone of the main character. After that, he jumped up from the swing and ran in an incomprehensible direction, and the main character began to shout for him to stop, because he had his phone in his hands. He quickly descended the stairs from the house and ran after him. Everything was pitch dark, so there was no way to accurately determine where he was. The main character did not run for long until he came across a strange field where tall grass grew up to his chest. He did not walk for long, pushing the grass and did not understand exactly where this guy had gone. At the moment when he realized that he had already lost it for sure, he decides to return, 
because this place seems creepy to him. From several sides, the sounds of approaching some entities began to be heard, from which it only became more terrible, because they were not visible, one could only hear their approach. Beads of sweat were already running down his face from fear and misunderstanding of what was happening now in the moment. These sounds approached him with every second and seemed to have already surrounded him. They were a few meters from him, because of which the main character began to catch panic attacks. And at that moment, people with the heads of pigs began to appear in front of him. There were a lot of them. They literally surrounded him. He did not understand who was standing in front of him, what kind of terrible monsters were and why they came for him. At this moment, he abruptly wakes up in his tree house, where the sun is already breaking its rays through the window. He glanced towards the door, which was lined with boxes, and they stood still, so he realized that everything that happened to him a few moments ago was a dream. He came down from the house, went to the swing and thought that in a dream everything looked too realistic, but he still did not understand exactly where his phone had gone. Someone turned to the main character from behind, wondering how he is still safe and sound. He turned to the speaker and realized that Teyosi was standing in front of him. He asked him why the main character ignored his advice. The protagonist did not understand what exactly Tai he wanted from him, but he just wanted the protagonist not to make them angry, because this makes life difficult not only for the protagonist, but also for him. Tai came to him this morning to fix the lack of a door. He brought it with him and set about installing it, to which the protagonist thanked him. The protagonist decided to tell Thaki what he knows about him. The owner of the hotel told him that he was only their employee, to which Thaki was surprised at the word employee said about him. But Taiki nevertheless agreed with this statement, because if the owner of the hotel believes that he is their employee, then everything should be so. The protagonist decided to ask if he was being held against his will on this island. And Tihai smirked and asked him, after everything he saw, is he still asking about this? As soon as Taihi finished installing the door, he promised to install a lock on it, but he planned to do it later. He was about to leave, but the main character asked him if he wanted to run away from here? The main character believed that if they maintain a boarding house, then they have a connection with the outside world, so visitors should come to them from time to time. This means that in order to book a room, they must use the phone or the internet. And of course, they must have a boat. Taihi heard this speech and wished him good luck in fulfilling his goals. It was noticeable that he did not want to leave this island, but why? The main character did not understand why Taihi behaved so cynically, why he did not want to escape from this island, because these people living here are crazy, as he himself told him. He offered to help each other and escape from here. He confessed to Tihai that he remembers absolutely nothing, especially since he lost his phone so he has no chance of escaping from here alone and they have to help each other out, right? He didn't hear any answer from Tihai, just an empty silence, so he began to beg to answer him at least something. Because yesterday he was so talkative, what happened today? The main character comes up with a brilliant idea, when new guests arrive, then ask them for help, and if this is really a boarding house, then they should arrive soon. Taiki chuckled at the word guests and answered that indeed several guests had recently arrived to them, to which the main character, with joy and surprise, began to ask Taiki about it. He replied that yes, they really arrived, but now they are with him somewhere here and pointed to his stomach with his finger, from which the eyes of the protagonist tripled in fright. The main character was silent and did not understand what this meant, so he asked Taihi what he meant by this, and Tihai left quietly thinking that it was only lunch, and he was already so hungry, so he better go and eat. The protagonist ran after Tihai and violently grabbed his arm, he shouted and asked Taihi to repeat what he had just said about the guests. At that moment, when he took his hand, the main character saw the wounds from the needle on the bend of the elbow, as if Tihai had taken some kind of drugs intravenously. This surprised the main character so much that he even let go of his hand in fright, so Taihai pulled it out and began to walk away. Taihi asked him if he saw everything, but the main character did not understand what exactly he was asking him about. Taihai turned his head towards the main character, he seemed to be under some kind of substances, and his eyes seemed insane, after which he asked if he saw everything. Such treatment of Taihi to the main character made him furious, he did not understand why he was treating him so rudely, as if realizing that he would not be able to surrender. The main character asked him about the marks on his hand, as well as about their origin, it seemed to him that he had them from a needle. He grabbed him by the scruff of the neck and called him a fucking junkie, he again asked Taihi what he meant by the fact that the guests were inside him. They entered the house and Tihai confessed that he was very sorry. The main character asked him if he was also joking about when he said that Minu knocked him out with a blow to the back of the head, and also that he had to prove his usefulness, and also clarified about the words about the visitors that were inside him. Taehee admitted that he was just fooling around and joking, so he apologized. After they sorted out all the misunderstandings, the main character decided to ask Taehee about their hotel and business and whether they really keep it all for this purpose, with which Taehee agreed. But the main character still did not understand why Taiki was on this island if he was not their slave, and also what marks he had on his arm from the needle, but Taiki was silent and did not give his answer to a single question. After a couple of seconds of silence, Tihai asked if the main character really did not recognize him, but he still did not understand how exactly he could know him, especially since he had amnesia. Taihi thought that he couldn't recognize him because he was very fat, 
because he thought he was very famous, but in fact it was not at all like that. Taehee abruptly stood up and began to dance, and then took his most famous pose, after which he said that he was a celebrity and performer, whose name was Jin Taehee, who was an ex-national star. And then the protagonist remembered the news bulletin, which said that the famous performer Ji, who was suspected of using drugs, is currently missing. The protagonist said seafood shop and then remembered that he was on the news, calling Taehee a drug addict. Ti Hai stood in front of him and did not understand what the guy sitting in front of him was talking about, what other seafood shop, what did the news have to do with it? At that moment, the protagonist jumped up and began shouting joyfully that he remembered him. He remembered that he was a performer, an idol, his name was Jin Taehee and he was a drug addict, which is why he left the stage. The news said that he was missing, but all this time he was hiding here. Tai breathed a sigh of relief, because he realized that memory gradually began to return to our main character, which could not but rejoice. The protagonist realized that if you keep it up, remembering a little bit, then soon he will be able to return all his old memories. Taehee scratched the back of his head and said that since he did him a favor, I think now he can definitely forgive his little joke. At this time, his walkie-talkie from the suitcase with tools made a noise, calling him. He was told on the radio that he needed to check the common toilet, as well as the windowsill of the guest room B. Taehee promised that all this would be done and began to get ready. Taehee squatted down and said that he had not done this for a long time, and what a hassle for him again. The protagonist did not understand what was at stake, so he asked him if something had happened? T. Hai only sadly and tensely replied that they were here. At this time, visitors to this island walked along the beach, it was a young couple and they were met by the owner and hostess of the inn. The visitors actually arrived, they were followed relentlessly by the protagonist, which meant that the boat had finally arrived here. It didn't matter to him whether they run the boarding house or not, but he didn't want to stay here for a second, because this place was so creepy. He saw footprints in the sand, so he got the idea to follow them and then he could find the boat. At that moment, the main character remembered Romy's words that she, like him, wanted to escape from here, but at that moment he decided not to think about it at all, because he did not have to think about it for his salvation. When he fled, he met Romy, who asked him a question where he was in such a hurry. The main character replied that he was not in a hurry anywhere, but Romy thought that he wanted to escape and asked this question. The protagonist, trying to catch his breath, replied that he really wants to run away, because he believes that the visitors arrived here by boat, so she suggested that he go along. She approached him again, almost crying, she asked that they escape from this island together. The protagonist asked her if it was true that her parents were bullying her, but she did not understand what exactly he was talking about, he reminded her that that book left on the beach, why did she leave it? She looked and was silent, not knowing what to say to him, and in just a couple of moments she said that this was not her real family, after which, without further questions, they began to run towards the boat. He ran and held her hand to run faster, he asked her to tell him everything as, soon as they could get off the island. They finally ran to the boat and noticed that Minu was sitting in the boat, then Romy decides to distract him, but the main character is not sure that everything will be fine with her, but Romy answers him that if something goes wrong so, he is bound to run alone. After which she asks him to promise her that he will definitely return for her and take her from this island. Romy went to Ming and asked him to come up to her so that she would show him something. Minu got out of the boat and went to his sister, he asked why she came, because if her father finds out, she will definitely get it, but Romy tells her that she came here for a short time. She took lipstick out of her purse and painted her lips, after which she said that her father gave her this lipstick last time and doesn't he think that she is not cute and not the latest in fashion? Minwoo stood silent, looking at her, he told her that he is not fully versed in fashion, so he cannot say that she is cool, but if she thinks so, she might agree with her. Minu said to this answer that Minu is so boring, and at that time the main character had already fled and was ready to hit Minu with a stone. Minu turned around abruptly and grabbed his hand, with which he wanted to hit him on the head with a stone. Minu asked why he needed this stone, after which he threw it out of the hands of the protagonist, and after that grabbed him by the neck. The protagonist shouted for Romy to get into the boat as quickly as possible and sail away from here, but he asked her to promise him that she would also return for him. The girl promised him that she would definitely return for him, after which she jumped into the boat, started the engine and sailed away from this island. Minu ran after her, he shouted that she could not just swim away, because she would have huge problems. He screamed for her to come back, because if she left, she would only make things worse. The protagonist lying on the pier began to laugh out loud, Minu called him a stupid bastard, however, the protagonist said that he did not know why he did not want to let them out of this island, but what he was going to do now, because Romy is so far away. On the evening of that day, he was sitting at a table in the house and the owner of the hotel was talking to him, he asked him if he really helped Romy escape from the island? The main character replied that their daughter herself wanted to leave, but the father replied that he was the head of the family and only he could decide what his daughter needed, and he had no right to interfere in family affairs. Her mother was sitting next to her and worried, she said that Romy took the only boat on the island, so she couldn't think of what they could do at all. The woman turned to the main character and said that by his actions he caused harm to them, and what would happen if Romy did not return. 
At that moment, everyone at the table began to laugh, but the main character, who was sitting at the table with them, did not understand why exactly everyone was laughing and what was said funny. He could not stand it and jumped up from his seat. He was interested in the question of what was said funny here, and also if they themselves were mocking Romy all this time. He informed them that Romy had told him that they were not her real family, and maybe he didn't know what was behind this empty book, but he thought that with this book she was definitely asking him for help. Everyone sitting at the table looked at him as if he were some kind of patient. The father of the family gathered his thoughts and said that he had completely lost his mind. Her mother laughed and said that Romy has always been a free-spirited child, and she loves to tease everyone. The younger sister, Yumi confirmed that she is a crazy bitch to the core. Her mother intervened because she shouldn't talk about her sister like that, and Yumi agreed that she knew it. The head of the family got up from his seat and said that he wasn't going to go that far, but he thought it would be a little indecent towards him. Then he invited him to speak frankly. He asked him who in his opinion from his whole family seemed to him the most abnormal, but the main character did not understand what exactly he should answer this question. Isn't it the one who suddenly appeared in front of them, claiming that he had lost his memories, and who couldn't figure out where he came from or who he was at all? Also, after he showed up, they had a knife missing from the kitchen, and you put on his shoes without permission and wandered around the house late at night. And in the end, his daughter, who wanted a quiet and peaceful life, after your appearance, suddenly runs away from home. And last but not least, he grabbed a stone and tried to pierce his son's head. Right now in this situation, he looked extreme, so he must let their words convince him. So he gets up from the table and reports that he is incredibly grateful to all of them for helping a homeless guy like him. He apologized to his family if he caused them any harm or inconvenience, and he also admitted that he should take responsibility for what happened to their daughter. However, he said that he had to get off the island no matter how, so he asked them if they could use the internet or phone they had at the hotel. He admitted that he was not just a victim of a shipwreck, but he needed the help of a doctor. And he can't stay here anymore. He agreed with what they said about him, that he was crazy, so he begged them to give them any way so that he could get off this island, but he is informed that there is no internet or telephone here. At this moment, he comes to the realization that there is no way here to contact the outside world, which makes him even worse. Then he decides to ask what happened to those guests who decided to stay here? But on the faces of all family members one can see misunderstanding. When he says something about the guests, they literally seem to pretend. The protagonist falls into a little panic and asks them if they will pretend again that they don't understand what exactly he is talking about? He tells them that he saw them, saw them with his own eyes, but at that moment he understands that now there is no point in proving something to them. He ran to the second floor and began to open each of the hotel room doors to find this pair of young people who had arrived on the island today. Each of the rooms is empty, and he does not understand where they can be. Then he remembers that he was told something about guest room B, so he asks himself where guest room B is. The owner of the hotel approached him from the back and something gloomy emanated from him, but the main character shouted something about the guests and that he had seen them on the beach. He grabbed the innkeeper by the collar and demanded to show him where guest room B was, to which Yumi stated that this guy right now seemed to have moved his head completely. Yumi informed him that they don't name their guests. The protagonist, continuing to hold the innkeeper by the collar, asked her, What? This morning the sun beams and the sea breeze came through my window. Minu walked down the corridor and read the book that the protagonist brought from the beach, thinking that Romy needed help and thus signaled this. Romy's favorite book, at which point Yumi laughed at her sister's refined taste. Minu unfolded the book and poked it in the face of the protagonist, informing him that this book was not empty, after which he echoed his younger sister's thought that he had gone crazy. The protagonist started laughing and turned to Ming, he thought Ming was talking like a mentally retarded person, when he could read this book so well. He snatched the book out of Minu's hands and asked him if he wanted to tell him that this book was not empty, that he had definitely lost his mind, and not Minu, who was reading an empty book. The protagonist stated that he wanted to hear the part that Yumi had just read to Minu again. Yumi looked at the book and asked the main character, why would she do this, what is the point? The protagonist asked her if she could read the same lines or not, because if not, then Mira just made up everything on the go. Yumi said that he was wrong, she just didn't want to read anything, but the protagonist was sure that this book was empty. He looked at the whole family and yelled at them, who are they all? Unless, if they found the victim of an accident, wouldn't it be okay to call the police, and also they really want him to believe that they run this boarding house with no connection to the outside world. And now they have a desire to make him look crazy in order to make him work, like they did with a drug addict idol? The owner of the inn did not understand who exactly he said idol drug addict, but the main character immediately began to shout for them to stop pretending every time that they did not know anything. He shouted that he would not become their slave, and also forced them to tell what kind of island it was and give him a phone so that he could contact the outside world. The innkeeper asked him if he knew how many uninhabited islands there were in their country, and did each such island have a name? The main character began to shout that this was complete nonsense, which, 
He just told him, but the owner said that it was useless to argue with him, because his condition was much worse than he thought, referring to Taiyi. The innkeeper approached Taiyi, who was standing with a gun pointed towards the protagonist, and when he passed next to him, he slipped him some kind of envelope with some kind of substance right into his shirt pocket. He asked Taiyi in a scary voice to completely isolate the protagonist from their family. The main character did not understand why Taiyi was pointing a gun at him, but he again repeated the speech about the fact that he should not anger them, and also proved to them his usefulness. On the night of the same day, he was in a tree house, he was lying and did not understand why he was trying more and more to figure out their family, because from this he falls into an even greater trap. He realized that he could not leisurely wait for Romy to return for him with help, he now only needed to think about how to get off this island. The guests had indeed arrived, and he had seen them with his own eyes, so he was sure of it, but did that mean there were more buildings on this island, because there weren't any in the house? Or maybe they're hiding something under a building in their basement? At that moment, he realized that he needed to find something with which he could open the door, he understood that he had to get out as quickly as possible to meet these people, because they were most likely in danger. He picked up a huge iron pipe that looked promising enough, he thought the best idea would be to team up with them and escape before it was too late. A dart caught his eye, he picked it up, and on the back of the dart there was some kind of piece of paper attached to an adhesive tape, very similar to the one he found in the mailbox on the shore. He peeled off this piece of paper and turned it over, and the number 9 was written on the reverse side, he did not understand what kind of pieces of paper and numbers he was finding, because there was no explanation for this. At that moment, something began to make noise outside the window again, he came up and looked, and at night the strange boy, whom he had already seen, was again swinging on the swing. He thought that this was a dream again, but it was definitely not a dream, he began to call this boy, swinging under his window, so that he would get up and try to open the door, because perhaps he lives here. He told him that apparently his family locked him here because of a misunderstanding, but he definitely promises him that he is not a bad person, and by the way, reminds him about the phone, which he most likely picked up somewhere. The main character begged to return his phone to him. The protagonist promised the boy to bring something delicious if he helped him get out of this treehouse. Or maybe the boy wanted a computer, a game console or something else, he offered everything if only the boy would help him get out. The boy again got up from the swing and began to run away, but the main character shouted that this time he would definitely not let him go, so he knocked out the window with a pipe and jumped onto one of the large branches of this tree on the house. His hand slipped and he flew down. Fortunately he managed to grab the chain, so with the help of him he easily descended from the tree house, at some point he even managed to think that he would die. The main character stood at the swing and understood that he really needed a phone, because it didn't matter if he could call from it, because he had to help him remember who he was. The protagonist again ran in the direction where the boy ran away and again ended up on the field, where last time in a dream he met people with pig heads. On this field in front of him was a boy standing in the middle of the grass, he turned to him so that he would not play the fool, but simply return his phone. The boy continued to stand in the middle of the field, and the main character came closer and closer to him, he again asked the boy to give him his phone, but the boy objected that he could not give him his phone. The protagonist, from a misunderstanding of everything that was happening, simply asked him how it was that he could not give him his phone. The boy said that he never had his phone. The main character still did not understand anything, because when he saw a boy with a phone, it was a dream, but he continued to question him. He asked him what he meant, because the phone he was fiddling with was definitely the protagonist's phone. At this moment, the protagonist turned around and saw a huge pig standing behind him. These were pigs of incredible size, and not people with pig heads. These pigs looked incredibly bloodthirsty at the main character, as if he had done something to all of them, or they knew something that no one else here knew. The main character closed his eyes with all his might and shrunk, and after a couple of seconds he opened his eyes again, then the pigs were no longer in front of him. At that moment, he realized that he really had schizophrenia. Toward morning, he returned to his tree house, removed the nails that Tehi used to nail the door to open it, and went inside. As soon as he went inside, he noticed the pipe he used to knock out the window, some kind of note was sticking out of it. He took out this piece of paper, and as it turned out, it also looked very much like all the previous notes that he found, some huge pixels were drawn on the front, and the number 3 was written on the back. He sat on the floor and began to laugh, his laugh was like the laugh of a madman, because this whole situation had already gone so far, where there was no explanation for everything that was happening. At that moment, it began to seem to him that all this was some kind of game, so he began to shout for this person to come out and stop making an idiot out of him. At that moment, he remembered how the owner of the hotel put something in Taihi's pocket, and the thought came to him that everything that was happening to him and his hallucinations could be due to drugs. He felt like they had put drugs in his food. Then he sat down on the floor and decided to lay out all the papers that he managed to collect on the island. He had three notes, with numbers 5, 9 and 3. At that moment, he still did not understand what these numbers were, 
and also why he needed them, but these numbers must necessarily mean something, because it could not be otherwise. About pixels, he began to think that it could be a mosaic, well, or an image under high magnification. He tried to see what exactly was drawn in these pictures, but he could not make out. He begged himself not to think about it, there was no point in thinking too much about it, it could all be caused by hallucinations anyway, so he needed to focus on escaping and nothing more. Among the rubbish in the treehouse, he found binoculars, after which he went to the window and began to examine the concentration of evil, or rather the boarding house, standing nearby. He put a knife and a pipe in front of him and realized that it was too dangerous to take a knife with him, so armed with a pipe, he left the house. He went even closer to the house and began to peer, with the help of binoculars he could see that the owner of the hotel was in his room and was doing something with a gun. Yumi sat in her room at the table and wrote or read something, as if she was doing homework for school, but there were no schools here, so she was engaged in self-education. Then Minu came out of the house and carried some kind of package, the main character did not immediately understand where he was going, but when he examined the package, he realized that he was going with him to the guests who had arrived. The protagonist decided to follow him, and the further he followed him, the more confident he became that he was definitely heading towards the place where the couple had stopped. So this is where guest room B is located, it was so luxurious that the main character began to cry. Minu went to this guest room, so the main character decided to wait until he left this place. After some time, Minu finally left the guest room and began to return back, which the main character noticed and decided not to hesitate for a second to immediately go there as soon as Minu disappeared. The main character went to the guest room and opened the door, it was incredibly dark inside the house, and he began to call someone who could be here. He went further inside the house and shouted for someone to help him or respond, but it seemed that this young couple was no longer in this house. In the middle of the house, he suddenly noticed a table that was strangely lit, and there was a telephone on it, so the main character went to this phone and immediately picked up the phone and said hello. The voice from the receiver asked the main character to save him, begging him to come to the rescue. But at the end of the wire, the main character, speaking to him or her, absolutely did not understand who exactly he was talking to, so he asked who was talking to him, but the voice did not stop and repeated over and over again to be saved, because someone once kill him. The main character again asked who was talking to him, but the voice repeated that she was in so much pain, help, she screamed that she did not want to die like this, because it was not fair. The main character decided to ask if the woman who recently arrived on the island with her boyfriend is talking to him now, but the voice only repeated a plea for salvation. The main character could not stand it and shouted into the phone for her to answer where she is now and where her boyfriend is, and at that moment the call was interrupted. He continued to hold the phone in his hand and didn't understand what the strange conversation was between him and some voice from the phone. At that moment, he decided to dial the rescue service, and as soon as he got through, he said that he somehow ended up on the island, and he had no way to get out of it. The voice at the end of the wire asked again for information about the island, because the main character did not specify in any way what kind of island it was. He told the police that he did not know the name of this island, and also did not know where exactly it was located. He told the police that some family lives on this island, but they are all very strange, and it's hard to explain, but something is clearly wrong with them. The policeman answering him on the phone asked him to clarify all the information again, because he did not understand what exactly was being said, then the main character replied that he was in a shipwreck and ended up on this island, and he also lost his memory, so in any case he needs help. The police officer heard the protagonist please and asked him to give his exact location, however the protagonist replied that he did not know where he was, and is there no way for them to trace the call, for example, to calculate the coordinates of this call. The policeman recalled that the main character told him something about the family, so he decided to clarify whether he turned to members of this family for help? The protagonist began to yell into the phone that these people are strange, so he can't turn to them for help. The policeman anxiously asked the caller what exactly was their unusualness and strangeness, as he called it. The protagonist ignored this question and asked the policeman if they could trace this number to find it quickly. But there was a deafening silence in the receiver, the main character tried to find out if the policeman could hear him by saying hello, but at that moment the policeman answered him with a phrase that he had already heard from the hotel owner, do you know how many uninhabited islands there are in our country? And he thinks everyone has a name? At this moment, he lets go of the phone and the phone disappears, as does the table on which this phone was standing. He opens his eyes and realizes that everything that happened to him now was his hallucination. The main character stood in the middle of the kitchen and looked around. At this moment, he notices the black package that carried Mina to this house and decides to lift it up, and under it lay the bloody clothes of the arriving couple, which he saw this morning. It was definitely his t-shirt and the girl's hat, which showed pools of blood soaked into the fabric. From this, he jumped away from the basket in which he found these clothes and began to scream incredibly loudly, his scream was heard even outside this house. He left the guest house in horror and sadness, 
And at that moment he remembered that story from Taihi that the guests should be in his stomach, which provoked an attack of vomiting. At this moment, he promises himself that he will be able to finish them off, he is reminded of Taihi, who gave advice that he should be useful. In the morning, Tihai met the main character not far from the tree house, as it seemed to him, the fastenings were too weak, so he managed to get out of this house. At this moment, the main character wonders if Taihi knows that this family is killing their own guests, but despite this, he is not on his side, so there is no point in telling him what he saw. The protagonist decides to be useful to this family, so he asks Taihi how exactly he can be useful. Taihi said that the hostess really likes his work, so he just needs to prove to them that he is very needed and demonstrate his usefulness. And now he's asked him to leave because he doesn't have time to talk to him. He asked Tihai to give him his toolbox, because now he really wanted to demonstrate his usefulness to the whole family. In the morning he was already in the garden at the hotel and hammered piles for the fence, the main character noticed that the owner of the hotel was walking towards him with a gun, so he greeted him and asked where he was going. The owner was only interested in who released him, because the distrust of the main character was still huge. The protagonist, on the other hand, began to make excuses that last night, he behaved too stupidly and rudely, so he asked to forgive him for all the words and actions made yesterday. The innkeeper picked up on his speech, noting that he decided to atone for mistakes with his own work, that such zeal was admirable, but still he considered that this was not enough. Didn't he forget something important? He admitted that it was he who took the knife from the kitchen, so as soon as possible he would return it to the mistress in the kitchen. The owner was surprised, noticing that he had a very sincere heart, because this is exactly what he wanted to hear from him. The main character said that he had a small request to the owner of the hotel, after which he asked him to pray for him too, from which the owner was surprised, because he did not know that he was a believer. The guy said that he did not remember anything at all, but listening to his feelings, he thinks that he was one of the believers, then the owner of the hotel answers him that he will definitely pray for him. He believed that this whole accident situation must have been a lot of pressure on the main character and, considering what happened, they weren't being nice enough to him. The protagonist informs him that everything is actually in order, and if they need something else, he asks them to notify him about it, and he would definitely try to solve them. The innkeeper thanked him and moved on, which was incredibly gratifying, because all he had to do now was be calm so as not to annoy this crazy man. As he continued to drive the piles, he continued to wonder if there was any semblance of a connection to the outside world. After all, since Romy took the boat, which was the only way to get off the island, he began to think about what exactly she was doing now. He heard the phrase Romy, ungrateful girl, from which he went into a frenzy, because who could turn to her now if she ran away? The innkeeper asked her where she had been and whether she had visited this place again, which her father called a residence or whatever he called it. The innkeeper continued to stand and scold his daughter, how many times he asked her not to succumb to the influence of worldly temptations, and if she does not improve, she will certainly go to hell, after which he informs that they will have a sermon with her tonight. Romy walked near the main character and thanked him, because she had such a refreshing trip, she walked in new clothes with bags from new things to her room, from which the main character went into an even greater frenzy, because she promised to return and save him. At that moment, he remembered how the whole family laughed at him when they talked about Romy's escape, and then he understood why this whole family was laughing at him. He rushed to Romy with questions, what happened to her, because the reason why she wanted to leave this island was the usual shopping and attending a youth registration. She took out some packed item from her packages and handed it to the main character, saying that she made this gift especially for him, after which she pointed out to him that he had no right to yell and shout at her, otherwise he would be punished. At that moment, he remembered the belongings of the murdered young couple that he found in the guest house, and they were all covered in blood, from which a lump appeared in his throat, and said that this would not happen again in the future. As soon as the protagonist returned to his home, he sees a huge note that Yumi left him, in which she asks him to make her a small wooden wardrobe with certain dimensions. The main character, seeing this message, throws his box of tools, after which he rips off this paper and calls them bastards, because as soon as he gets off this island, they will all go to jail. As soon as he crumpled up the paper and threw it somewhere inside the treehouse, he bursts into tears, he cries and does not understand how he could end up in such a hell. He draws attention to the gift that Romy gave him, and does not understand how he could trust her, so he grabs it and tears off all the gift wrapping. Inside the gift box is a bottle with some substance called a herbicide. This substance helps fight weeds in the garden. This and subsequent brands who produce this herbicide became popular due to frequent cases of poisoning as a result of accidental or deliberate ingestion. Realizing that Romy gave him the herbicide, he starts laughing loudly and hysterically, repeating the word loudly, because he cannot believe that he was given a weed killer. Then he abruptly stands up and throws this bottle down, and the herbicide seeps through the lid and drips onto the floor, he calls Romy a fucking bitch, because she probably wanted him to drink it and die. At that moment, he forces himself to calm down, because what if she gave him the herbicide not so that he would drink it himself, 
but so that he poisoned the whole family with his chemistry, and then they could escape. He starts digging through the boxes because he wanted to find something that he definitely saw somewhere when he was digging through all this junk. Then he takes out a small black enema, into which he has drawn the herbicide. Ten minutes later he was already near the hotel, where he knocked on the door and the hostess opened the door for him, surprised at his appearance. He held out the kitchen knife he had stolen on the very first day he had arrived on this island. He asked for forgiveness from her, and also said that he was returning him, confirming the words that he had apparently completely lost his mind, since he did so. After that, he bowed before her so that she would definitely believe in his good intentions. The hostess replied that she would consider it only as a consequence of an injury received as a result of an accident. And from now on, she hopes that this will not happen again in the future, with which he certainly agreed and repeated again that he was very sorry that this happened. She turned around in the doorway and was about to leave, but he stopped her and asked where exactly she was going now, because if she was heading to the kitchen, then he would certainly like to help her. She entrusted him with cleaning the fish, and as it turned out, Cleaning the fish is such a painstaking job, and also quite hard, so he wondered how she copes on her own. He was again surprised that cooking required so much effort, but the hostess replied that this was her favorite hobby, because there was nothing else to do here. The protagonist tried with all his might to conduct a friendly conversation, and at that time he was already reaching into his pocket to add herbicide to their food. He asked her if they often had guests at all. The woman replied that quite often, and at that moment the main character, already wanted to send an enema with poison to the clean fish, but as soon as he imagined the poison family in front of him, he realized that he could not do this. At this time, the hostess noticed that he helped her so much, so she invited him to have dinner together for such great efforts. And at that moment, dead silence hung in the kitchen, he could not answer anything, from which the situation became more and more frightening with every second. After a moment, the main character said that today he still feels unwell, so next time he will definitely accept her invitation to have dinner together. As soon as he finished cleaning the fish, he left the inn, not sure what he was thinking when he wanted to add herbicide to everyone's food. At that moment, he realized that the island itself was driving him crazy. He returned to his treehouse, sat on the swing and poured out all the poison that had been collected in the enema. It seemed to him that he made the right choice, and it doesn't matter how badly they are corrupted, because it's wrong. He didn't know if there was any other way but to kill them. He sat on the swing and did not understand, because Romy is a real devil and she wanted to use him, and now they were all sitting together and probably having dinner, so a brilliant idea appeared in his head. He picked up the binoculars again and went to the boarding house, where he began to look at the windows, and it looked like they were all at the dinner table now, so he rushed to the house, getting to one of the windows, he opened it and climbed inside. The protagonist found himself in the room of the innkeeper, and most of all, the cross and the gun stood out to his attention, and he did not understand what was the meaning of this incredible combination. He was trying to find a phone somewhere in this room, but now he noticed that there was a laptop on the table by the chair, which could give him much more information than a regular phone. He immediately rushed to the laptop and thought that if there was no password on the laptop, then he would immediately believe in God, so he began to slowly open the laptop, hoping that there would be no password. He activated it and the desktop lit up in front of him, where there was no password for the laptop, so all that he needed now was to have internet on this laptop. At this moment, he notices that the internet network is connected to the laptop, so he shouts glory to the gods, and how cool God is, now it was paramount for him to decide who exactly he should contact, but at that moment the floor creaks, as if someone then walked towards the master's room. The creaking of the floors was getting louder, so the main character needed to remain undiscovered, and literally in a couple of seconds the door to the room opened and the owner of the hotel was standing on the threshold of the room. He went into the room and for some reason looked around, as if something was embarrassing him, and at that time the main character was under the bed, next to which the owner of the hotel was standing, he did not understand why he was now in the room because now is the exact time for dinner. The owner abruptly and loudly said that the window was open, from which the protagonist made droplets of sweat on his face. He went to him and began to look around intently, after which he asked himself whether he opened this window, from which the main character, who was under the bed, panicked even more and even bit his hand out of fear so as not to make sounds. Then the owner of the hotel says that he must have opened this window to ventilate his room and with a slight movement of his hand he slammed it, which greatly facilitated the position of the protagonist and he even exhaled silently. After some time, the owner of the hotel lay down in his huge chair and dozed off, there was a Bible under his hand, and then the main character decided to get out from under the bed to return to the laptop again. He reactivated the laptop, was on the desktop, clicked on the internet icon, but noticed that there was no longer an internet connection. He began to try to click on the address bar with the cursor, but all this was unsuccessful, because it did not click in any way, then he decided to go to the favorites that he had on his laptop. There was only one link in the favorites with a huge smiley, which was called our happy family. At this moment, the innkeeper began to wake up, making awakening sounds, 
so the main character again needed to hide so that he would not be killed on the spot with this gun. He stretched on his chair and began to get up, and at this time the protagonist, who was terribly frightened, hid behind the chair. The owner got up from his chair, said that time flies incredibly fast, after that he took off his belt from his trousers and went to Romy to teach her a lesson that she definitely will not forget. After a moment, he left the room and slammed the door, and the steps began to move away from this room, so the protagonist breathed a sigh of relief again. He rushed back to his laptop, went to his favorites, and clicked on the only link called Our Happy Family. Here he was met by a strange painted picture, where a house was drawn, and the whole family stood in front of it, and the inscription Sweet Home flaunted on top. The only thing that confused the main character was one of the characters drawn here, whose face was crossed out. He wondered if, in terms of clothing, it wasn't the guy he'd seen swinging in front of his house so many times that made him break out in a sweat. After all, there was not a single explanation why they painted over his face. Since there was no explanation for this, he assumed that the whole family hated this guy for some reason. And it seems that some kind of link was hidden on the face of the child. Then he pressed it and the whole screen went out, as if the laptop had turned off. At that moment the main character did not understand what had happened and why the laptop had gone into sleep mode. He even thought for a moment that the electricity was turned off. But a moment later, the laptop screen lit up, and the tail of the six pigs appeared on it. It was written that the first pig is smart, and is able to kill anyone with just one finger, the second, if he tries hard, he can make a very beautiful bouquet. The third pig loves to oppress others, but can become a shield. The fourth has a deep dark side, like a dark tunnel. The fifth pig is a fool, endlessly waiting for his lover. And the sixth one doesn't really exist. The main character did not understand what kind of fairy tale it was, and also what it was about because there was really little sense here, but at that moment a timer appeared on the laptop, meaning a countdown from 60 seconds. It was not clear what would happen once the countdown ended, which made the protagonist even more frightened as he watched everything that was happening. At this moment, he grabs the Bible, opens it, and all the pages of this book are empty, so he rips out one of the sheets to write down this whole tale. After that, he rushes to look for a pen, rummaging through three nearby cabinet drawers, he finally finds it. After that, armed with a piece of paper and a pen, he rushes to the laptop to write down this tale. At this time, 28 seconds are already on the timer. And at this moment, he definitely believes that something very important is hidden behind these words. There was very little time left on the timer, but it was still necessary to write. Quite a bit, and when the last second remained, all the text was rewritten on a piece of paper, and the laptop turned off. He barely had time to write everything down, but he still did not understand what it meant, so he took the laptop again and tried to turn it on, but it no longer turned on. When he lifted the laptop to connect it to a power outlet with a cord, another strange piece of paper peeled off the laptop cover, where there were pixels on the front side, and the number 2 was written on the back side. That night, he returned to his treehouse and began to make a closet that Yumi asked him to, and when he was hammering one of the nails into the piece of wood of the closet, he hit his finger with a hammer, from which he screamed and huddled in pain. After this failure, he lay down on the floor and stared up at the ceiling, then reached into one of his pockets and pulled out a note on which he had written the tale of the six pigs. At that moment, he had the feeling that someone was watching him, exposing him in this situation as a complete idiot. He wondered who could have left him all these cards in this fairy tale. He read the whole story again, but this did not make it any clearer and why there were these first pig, the second, and so on. In addition, he did not understand what it meant, he could kill with one finger. And when he said this, an insight came to him, from which he jumped up and said that this could not be, then looked at his fingers and again said the phrases written on his piece of paper. Then he abruptly walked to the door and left the house, slamming it loudly. He went down the stairs and it seems that he understood the whole story. A smart pig can kill a person with just its fingers, a reference to the infamous Korean celebrities who committed suicide amid online bullying. Then he began to think that every word hides under him, so he found a reference to the bouquet in darts, the phrase deep as a dark tunnel looked like an iron pipe with which he beat out a window. The fool who waits forever for his lover, this was a reference to the mailbox he found in the very first place on the beach. A loves to oppress others, but can become a shield, and then images of prisoners with huge weights with chains that were tied to their legs so that they could not escape, as well as a warrior in chain mail, which was created from small chains, surfaced in his head. So, another note was in the iron chain, which was located just outside his treehouse, on which the swing hung. And so it turned out, because in one of the rings of the chain another note was enclosed. He went to the chain and found this note, after which he took it out and in front of him was again a picture of pixels, and the reverse side contained the written number 6. At that moment, someone from behind said the phrase congratulations, from which the main character was thrown into sweat and cold. Behind him stood this little boy, whose face seemed super creepy. 
The protagonist decided to ask again who he was, but the boy only answered that from now on he was ready. This incomprehensible answer confused the protagonist, because he did not understand anything of what was happening. The boy pointed to his left pocket and asked to see what was there. The main character again did not immediately understand what this boy wanted from him and reached into his left pocket with his hand. Somewhere in this pocket was his phone, and the boy said that he had been lying in his left pocket all this time, and the main character had never even checked this pocket. He took out the note and saw that the phone had a six-digit password, and the note listed exactly six pigs, which were the symbols for each of the numbers he found on this island. He again remembered the phrase that the first pig is smart, and is able to kill anyone with just one finger, and it was this note that he took from under the cover of the laptop, where the number two was written on the back. He entered the first digit of the code by pressing the number two. The second, if he tries hard, he can make a beautiful bouquet. He found this note on the back of the darts, where the number nine was written, so he entered it as the second number in the password. The third pig loves to oppress others, but can become a shield, he found this note last in the swing chain, and on the back of this note was the number six, so he entered it third. The fourth has a deep dark side that looks like a dark tunnel, and this note was found in a metal pipe, this note had the number three on it, so he entered it as the fourth character in the password. The fifth pig is a fool, endlessly thirsting for his lover, this note referred to the mailbox in which she lay, and the number five was written on the back of the sheet, so he also entered it as a fifth. And the sixth actually does not exist, so he, after a little thought, clicked on the number zero, which most suited the description of what he had read. At that moment, he unlocked the phone and saw his home profile. He went in, but what next, as expected, was really not caught here. He drew attention to the photos app icon, so he clicked on it in various albums with his photos opened in front of him. He went to my photos, where there were a few photos, flipped through them a little and noticed a photo in a military suit, where the name Sun Jin Hyuk was written on his clothes, after which he joyfully exclaimed that he finally recognized his name. He turned to the boy, standing next to him all the time, and shared this joy, because now he knew at least his name. Then he clicked on the photo album, which was called food and there really were various dishes from different cuisines. From which he concluded that he was still a gourmet. But while scrolling through the food photos, nothing else came to his mind, except that he recognized his name, there was no more useful information that he could use in any way. At that moment, he clicked on the last album, called Photo for Memory and there were really a lot of photos in this album, as many as 218 pieces. In one of the photos, he discovered that he had a girlfriend, then he began to scroll further and admitted that his girlfriend was very cute, and in all the photos it looked like they were doing nothing but hugging. Then he turned on some video with his girlfriend running away from him in tears, fear and panic were visible on her face, and tears flowed from her eyes, then he took her by the neck in this video and began to choke. From what he saw, he abruptly flipped through the album to the next video, where they were apparently on a hike with his friends, and when one of his friends was standing in front of a cliff, he came up and pushed him into the abyss. All these videos scared Jin Hyuk incredibly much, he could not understand what kind of videos they were, and also why people were dying on them, and most importantly, why he filmed it. In the next video, he was riding in a taxi, where at one point he took out a hammer and brutally cracked down on the taxi driver, turning his entire head into a ground state. Then he flipped through the video again and could no longer contain his panic, he shouted what it all meant and what kind of video it was. In the next video, he saw a man tied to a chair, where with a slight movement of his hand he shot him with half a pistol clip, from which the man fell along with the chair. As soon as he finished watching the videos, he rushes to the boy to explain everything that is happening on these videos, but the boy only smiled contentedly and continued to stare at him. At this moment, Sung Jin begins to think that this is all happening to him because he was drugged, after this phrase he begins to laugh out loud, and his laughter is already more like hysterical. The boy at this moment orders him to pull himself together, addressing him by name, after which he asks him how long he is going to endure while this family will mock him. He asks him if he wants to escape from this island, but Sung Jin is silent, his face still showing confusion. Then the boy's face is distorted into an incredibly evil and scary look, after which he orders Sung Jin Hyuk to show all these lovers who is the boss on this island. Because of this, Song Jin Hyuk himself lights up with the idea of revenge and anger, because he realizes that he is a real killer and psycho here.